Welcome back to the Coders Legacy channel. In today's video, we'll discuss a cool library called the Pandas table that can be used to combine the power of Pandas and TakeInter. Pandas being a very great data management library and data manipulation and TakeInter being a very great GUI library. So what the Pandas table library does is give us a way to visually represent data frames which is a really great thing because data frames are just normal variables, normal data structures like lists. So if you want to display it in a nice format, like in a table, for example, because that's what data frames are, they have like columns, they have rows. So it makes sense to represent them as a table. And that is what the pandas table library does. You can install it using pip install pandas table. Okay, Linux users may have to do pip3, Linux and Mac. So once you have this installed, you can import it, okay, and make sure you have pandas as well. If you don't have pandas and you run the pip install pandas table command, it'll install pandas for you as well. Okay, so import pandas table and import pandas as pd, as we often do. And I'm just gonna change this up a bit. There's only one thing we really, we really need. From pandas table, import table, okay? Then we'll import takeinter. Import takeinter as tk, as we often do. All right, so what we're gonna do is create a class because oop is the way to go, object-oriented programming, pandas app, and then we'll just define our init function. All right, so what we'll do, we'll just leave that empty for now. Come down here. Initialize our takeinter application dot tk. Then what we'll do here is root dot main loop. Start our takeinter application. And in the middle, we'll initialize our pandas application, our class. This is where we're going to write all of our code. So let's begin. Um, the first thing we'll do is create a frame. And actually, we need to pass in the parent over here pass in root, and then initialize our frame. Our frame is like a container, and this is gonna be important later. I'll tell you why. So we just pack our frame in, give it some padding so that the window doesn't look congested. Now what we're gonna do is create a table. Self.table is equal to table. Now this is where the frame is important because you cannot pass in root or actually master, master being the root object, you cannot pass that in directly. Pandas table is not compatible with the Windows object, okay? It needs a container like a frame, okay? Then what you can do is data frame. Now we need to define a data frame. Now, of course, you can, you have many options, okay? You can just pass in an empty data frame in here, for example, you can just do this. But um, let's just create a, a sample data frame over here called df. And then we can do, um, or let's just create it out here globally. It doesn't really belong within the class. Okay, so let's just pretend this data came in from somewhere. So we'll do pd.dataframe. Then over here, we'll use the dictionary approach. And let's come up with some data like name and then create some names, very standard names, John, Alice, and Bob, okay? Then we'll make a new column called age. Just give some random ages in there. Then gender, again, just do some of that. And now we have a data frame that we can use. So we'll pass that data frame in here. And there are a bunch of other, other cool things we can do here. These parameters, I'll just go ahead and it, enable them because they're kind of cool and useful. Show toolbar and show status bar. All right. So now we're almost done. We just need to do self.table.show. This is going to initialize and render the table. Okay. So. Just run our code now and watch the magic unfold. There we go. So here we have a very nice table 
and it comes with a lot of different features like you know like highlighting you can even edit these and uh, then there's these actually this is what is really interesting about this this is the toolbar so you can do things like save and if you save this then it's gonna save it as a, a pickle file pickle is a serialization library in python that's used to serialize and well, basically save and load objects okay in files so you can use that feature here to like you know make a nice table enter some data save it then come back and load it again then there's stuff like import csv you're going to import a csv in here it's basically the same thing as taking a pandas data frame loading it you know because pandas actually has that feature you do just you just gotta do pd dot read csv so um, then there's load excel file that's cool um, then there's copy table to clipboard, many different features like this. Some of these plot features require you to install other libraries. We won't cover that here. Um, these are just some other cool functions. You can take a look at yourself. These are pretty intuitive. You can just mess around with them a bit. There's zooming in, in here, etc. But there's one thing I want to show you that's kind of important, I feel, and it's not very obvious. It's not very intuitive, especially. So I want to show you guys that. I'm going to define a new function here called add row. Okay. Basically what I kind of want to show you guys is how to edit this table, um, edit the table without, uh, actually, you know, interacting with UI. If I run this code, let me just show you something cause I kind of missed out on something. If you come over here, then right click, you can add a new row. Okay. And ignore that deprecation warning, by the way. I don't think it's it's not an us issue really. Maybe I just need to update my libraries or something. Just a deprecation warning and hopefully the libraries will update. It's not really an us issue. So when you enter something here, you need to press enter. Okay, if you just click away, it's not going to be saved. So you need to kind of press enter. Okay, then just enter ages. And double click actually to select these. Okay, single click will only highlight it. Double click to actually select it. Okay, so once you're done with that, um, well, let's come back over here. I kind of want to show you how to directly modify it, okay, without actually going through the UI, because as a as the programmer, as the developer, you want a way to you know change this internally to maybe swap it out for a different data frame or to add a few rows through code, etc. Okay, so what we're gonna do is define a new row first. Let me just define something like this. Uh, let's go ahead and do, do the same person, Smith. Give him an age of 18 again. Let's just make everything strings. Then gender would be male. So now what we're gonna do is self, um, we'll do data frame, this data frame dot Append. or you know what what we can just do instead because I don't want to access a global variable in here like that I don't want to modify it so what I'll do is self.table dot model dot df this is how you access the data frame okay the data frame that we have passed into this table then we'll do self.table dot model dot df dot underscore append and by the way, this is how you do it now. It's pandas is updated, so there's this new underscore you need to add to the append function. At least I found that, found that out just now. Okay, so then you gotta do ignore index is equal to true. Then what you're gonna do is self dot table dot redraw. Now this is similar to show, but show is something you call in the very beginning when you first want to display your table. Redraw just updates it. Okay, so once we do this, and I totally forgot to actually call this, we'll just call this down here. Normally there would be some button or something that triggers this function, but there we go. You can see this fourth row in here. That means this was added and re-rendered successfully. So this is where we're gonna end the video. Hope you guys found it useful.